We all love the sound of money, and a $1,500 sign-on bonus sounds even better. That's right, Belicio Foods of Jackson is offering a $1,500 sign-on bonus to new employees. Receive an extra $100 your first six weeks, then $400 after day 90, and $500 after day 180. Don't wait. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers today. That's BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Come work for a company who truly values their employees. Come work for Belicio Foods. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on Main Street TV. And, of course, Jennifer here to start off your morning and the morning news update with her good friend Pete Wilson, brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. And if you are looking to buy or sell or have any real estate needs, give Nia a call, 740-418-4135, and she'll work hard for you because it says so on the screen. Okay, well, I believe it. Yes. We know so, don't we? We do know so. We don't we don't lie often on television, do right. we? Do no. we ever lie? I don't think so. I don't try to. No, we, st- we, st- we, we might not lie on television, but we lie on the internet a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. There, no, everything on the internet is the truth, James. That's what I've heard. It was on Facebook. It's yeah. true. Okay. No, or, or, I was wondering about that, some of the things I've seen. Not necessarily. No. All right. Well... This is Vinton County Junior Fair Week. It is. The folks in Vinton County especially know that. It's been a special fair, the 100th anniversary of kids being involved in the fair. So the fair is older than 100 years, but that's when the kids got involved, the 4-H program and all. And it's been a very special week, uh, all the standard stuff, but some special stuff thrown in there as well. You know, we had the parade on Sunday, which was uh, reviving an old tradition and that after the Junior Fair livestock sale, which will be later today, they're going to do fireworks. So, Ooh. I mean, we're talking about a special day uh, Sounds uh, for, fun. The, for the Vinton County Junior Fair. And, of course, uh, that fair started last weekend, and it will run through Saturday. And, uh, of course, the big event today, the culmination of the Junior Fair side of this fair, will be the livestock sale. Of course. Uh, they start at 5 o'clock, Jennifer. And they'll be rolling through uh, animals in this order, the dairy beef feeders, turkeys, hogs, chickens, steers, rabbits, lambs, and goats. 144 animals is our unofficial count, at least uh, what we have right now. Okay. And uh, myself and Jeremiah Shaver will be there to cover the livestock sale. And uh, we hope, fingers are crossed, a lot of those pictures, if not all of them, from the championship animals will appear in next Wednesday's edition of the Telegram. So you might be looking for those very cool. much like we did for the Jackson County Fair, uh, where the livestock sale, of course, was held last Friday. Yeah. So 316 animals there. So, uh, you know, a, lo- a lot of animals uh, passing by. Jeremiah will be taking pictures. I'll be getting the information. And uh, all week, uh, we want to thank uh, the Jackson or the Vinton County Extension Age, uh, Office and Travis West, the main extension agent there, for sending us results. Uh, we'll have a bunch of results in Saturday's paper, a lot of kids' names in there, so you want to check it out. Yes. And one of the kids' names at the head of the list, and we're going to make special mention, is Riley Ashmore. Riley Ashmore, <clears throat> here she is right there. She is on the far right, if you're looking at the picture. Uh, Sophia Mayers, uh, one of the... Uh, younger attendants there, and Queen Trinity King also in the picture. Riley has that huge trophy in front of her because she was named yesterday the Showman of Showmen. Oh, awesome. Uh, Way to go, girlfriend. They have have that same event in Jackson County. It's probably maybe a standard thing at the county fairs, but what it is, it's really cool. All the showmanship winners from the whole week at the fair, because all the animal shows in Benton County are run Monday through Wednesday, they come together for a contest against each other. Yep. And what they do is, uh, you know, showing their own animal, we know they can do that, but how do they do when they show the other animals? And so it's a fun thing, but it's also a competitive thing because they're all proud, of course, of of their prowess and what they've already proven. And Riley Ashmore is the winner. Red Thompson Jr., who shows up everywhere, it seems like. He does. Was there uh, to cover that contest and get this picture. And he also did an interview with Riley after, and uh, if James allows, we will show that right now. Okay. Okay, we're here with Riley Ashmore, and she has won Showman of Showman contest this morning. 
And can you tell us a little bit about uh, what it feels like to win and a little bit about your 4-H experience? So my 4-H experience this year has been really good. I got grand champion of senior showman, which then put me in the ultimate drive. So I won ultimate and then I got to be in showman to showman. And after that, my pig won reserve champion and then my steer won reserve champion. So my fair week has been pretty good. And then today just topped it all off and made it feel really good to win that I've been working all summer just to prove that I've been working hard. Now tell me what year you're in in school and, and what you participate in. I'm a senior in high school and I participate in cross country and track and I'm also a member of FFA. I'm the secretary for FFA. That's about it. And what do you want to do after high school? I'm really not sure yet, but I'm pretty sure something in the ag field. Um, I'm not exactly sure on what, but... And what's the best thing that you've learned from... Uh from your uh, 4-H experience and your uh, FFA experiences? Um, so you work for what you want and you get what you receive. So if you work super, super hard, you're gonna get a super good outcome. And whenever you don't work hard, you're not gonna end up with a good outcome. Oh, very good. <laughs> okay, well, we thank Red Thompson Pretty Jr. Well well said. No, no, <laughs> she's, no, no it she's is. She's got it. <laughs> it, it. She's young and, you know, I've been around the many blocks and that is the bottom line in anything. You put in the time, you work. Glad you she have knows a that. Ch- you're not guaranteed anything, but you have a chance for really good things to happen. Yes. And they did happen there for Riley Ashmore. So congratulations to her and all the kids that participated, uh, even the ones who didn't win uh, you know, a big prize or anything. They put in a lot of time and worked, and I'm sure the experience taught them a lot. And that's why the fair is so special. Uh, You know, some of these kids uh, aren't football stars or whatever. Uh, They're not beauty queens who get to be, uh, you know, the the queen of the the 4th of July or or, uh, anything like that, or prom queen, but they get a chance to compete in their own way uh, with a project, an animal project or a general project or whatever. And, you know, they have a chance to be rewarded for their, for their work. That's right. And so many kids at the fair, uh, all these county fairs. That's right. And this is why we preach that 4-H and, and FFA and all of those organizations are so important because it's teaching these kids so much from a very, very young age. And it's all good. It's all good, wholesome stuff. Right. Well, and in this Saturday's paper, Jennifer, speaking of, uh, you know, all the kids that get a great experience uh, from participating in the fair, no matter how much they win or they don't win, uh, we'll have a lot of names in Saturday's paper. We'll, in fact, have all the names of the kids uh, in the animal project, except the cattle. They, that was the last one that was held this week. We haven't received those yet. We hope to get those in next week's paper, but all the other names will be in there. So you want to Definitely pay attention to that, especially if you're from uh, if you're from uh, Vinton County. Earlier in the week, Jennifer, they had something called the General Project Awards. This is non-animal. There's a yeah. lot of kids involved in that. You know, some kids, of course, don't live on the farm, but they're in 4-H, sure. and they gravitate towards some of these projects, of course. And we want to recognize three of the top General Project uh, winners at the Vinton County Fair. They were named on Sunday, one of the first events at the fair. Brian Bledsoe was the overall pets category winner. And uh, I think we have his picture here. There he is. That's Aww. Brian Bledsoe. Congratulations. Go, they make three overall awards in Vinton County for general projects, but there's many, many kids who participate. And we had their names in the paper earlier. That was in Wednesday's paper. Uh, the uh, overall winner for food and nutrition was Scout Bethel. And there's Scout right there. Not sure what she cooked, but her uh, her project was titled "Let's Start Cooking," nice. and she uh, she emerged as the overall food and nutrition winner. And then the winner of the overall clothing and textiles category was Emily Hutchison. And there is Emily right there. Um, and of course, she has the designer jeans on. I was gonna <laughs> say maybe Emily could stitch up her jeans, or she's got Crocs on too. Well, she she can definitely. Well, she's a winner in our book. She, then, right? And she's her, got on Crocs. Her tie, her her clothing project was entitled "Clothing for Middle School," and once again, uh, she emerged from uh, a large group of uh, contestants. As far as the remaining uh, activities at the fair, of course, we mentioned the junior fair livestock sale tonight, starting at five o'clock. 
pre-sale announcements at 4.30. Uh, there will also be a garden tractor pull tonight at 7 p.m. And after the uh, livestock sale, whenever that is, they don't name a time because we don't know how long it'll take, there will be that fireworks show. Yes. So you definitely want to be, be awesome. around for that. Then on the finale day of the fair on Saturday, baby contest at 11 a.m. The theme is Hollywood red carpet. You can imagine some of the out, outfits oh, that those babies will that be in. Theme. At noon, a dog show. And then, of course, the rides will be operating all day. Last chance mm -hmm. for those, mm -hmm. 1 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon, 6 to 11 in the afternoon. And then in the evening, I'll give you one guess what the finale entertainment attraction is. The Bang 'em Up Derby. Right. Woo! My gosh, you are such a smart girl. The Demolition Derby. Yeah. And you know, we talked with the fair people in Jackson County, and overall, they were very pleased with how things went. Even with as, <laughs> as popular as the micro wrestling was, and people liked the motocross, and they loved yep. the rodeo, Demo Derby is still number one. Oh, it's a good one. Right. And there's lots of Demo Derbies that take place, uh, especially up in Benton County during the so-called off season. So, you know, this is a, a real, real draw. Yep. So, That's so cool. So uh, once again, there's so many winners, uh, different winners in these animal shows that have taken place during the week that I'm not going to name them all now, but we have, we'll have them all in a story in Saturday's paper. That's right. You know, talking about the, the, the grand champion, reserve champion, market animals, the showmanship winners, uh, the different categories. There's many of them, and many of those pictures we'll take tonight, and we'll have those photographs in uh next Wednesday's paper and beyond. Probably we're going to shoot to get it all done on Wednesday, but but we'll see. All right. Uh, what's going to happen next Tuesday? See if I've prompted you enough so you know. I know. What is it? There's an election. Exactly. A, a, a lot of people still don't seem to know, but there is a special primary election. Uh, we're, whether they want to vote or not, we're going to do our due diligence and make sure people at least know about it. Yes. And so that's a, a special, it's called a special primary election because these things that were in, in the election uh, that was supposed to have been in the May primary election were not on the ballot because of, uh, you know, the fact that there wasn't a final agreement or approval of the new legislative districts that were drawn because we had the census in 2020. So as a result, uh, there's going to be nominations for uh, on the, both the Democrat and Republican side for state Senate, state representative, and state central committee man and mm -hmm. state central committee woman. Nothing else will be on the ballot. It's You're not required to vote, but if you're going to vote for those positions, this is your chance. Uh, the winners, uh, whoever gets nominated, will move on to the uh, general election, except for the committee people, because their party, those races will be decided uh, in this special primary election. There will be uh, extended hours. Uh, you can uh, vote up until 7 o'clock tonight at the boards of elections in both Jackson County and Vinton County and all over the state, of course. Uh, and then on um, Saturday from, um, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Sunday from uh, 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. and then again on Monday up until 2 o'clock. Okay. You can vote early. And the absentee voting actually goes beyond that as long as you get it in uh, by election day. So uh, so what is on the ballot? We're going to focus a little bit on that. In Saturday's edition, we'll have it online, too. Uh, we will have the lineup for this primary special election in addition to a profile of what is probably the main contested race uh, for Jackson and Vinton counties. And that is the Republican nomination for the 17th District State Senate. Bob Peterson, uh, Republican, is term limited. He cannot run for re-election for the 17th District. Okay. 17th District goes across part of southwestern Ohio into southeastern Ohio. It includes Jackson County and in part of Vinton County. In 2022, if the districts hold, and they may not, Jackson and Vinton Counties, all, all of Vinton County as well as Jackson County will be in the 17th District, all of it. Okay. Jackson County already is. Vinton County is split up between two. Yeah, that's bizarre to no, me. No, I, I, I never like that when that happens. No. But the two candidates who hope to replace Bob Peterson on the Republican side are Thomas Wang from Waverly mm -hmm. and Shane Wilkin, who is from Hillsborough. Uh, Shane, there is Thomas Wang. Uh, he is a businessman, uh, not currently holding office. 
He is running for that 17th District State Senate, and that is Shane Wilkin. He is a current state representative from uh, Hillsborough. Uh, he does not represent Jackson or Vinton counties. He's a little bit to the west. Okay. But uh, those are the two uh, men who hope to win the Republican nomination. Whoever wins will face Democrat Gary Boone from Hillsborough, who is unopposed. Okay. So that is the only contested race on the Republican side. On the Democrat side, the only contested race uh, on the Democrat side is for state central committee man. And uh, I'm going to give you those names right now for state central committee man. Uh, that would be. Um, Can it be woman? No, in this case, it's a man. It would be, <laughs> it would be uh, Brown. Okay, it would be Chris Chase Brown and Dylan Page. The state central committee man and woman positions are kind of like party positions, yeah. where they represent the party at the state level, and you know they do it by districts. In our case, it's the seventeenth district, so the same district for our Senate is for our committee man and woman. The other people who are running for committee man and woman on both the Democrat and Republican side, the only contested race is for that one on the Democratic side. Okay. So uh, really, there's not a lot happening in this election. I'll admit it, but um, it's still there. It's important for you to get out and vote, Right. Though. Well, here's how much interest there's been. <laughs> Early absentee voting through last Friday in Jackson County, 90 total votes. 90. In Vinton County, 45. But... They have to be prepared for a full election. And so on election day, all the polls oh will be open. The poll workers will be there working. I'm not sure how they're going to staff it. I hope it, they bring some cards if it's gonna to be play. The, if, or yeah, some... if it's going to be the same. <laughs> but uh, uh, we don't have very many special elections or primary elections in August, but we have one Cornhole, perhaps? Like, right, exactly. Something to entertain yourself? Right. So anyway. Get out and vote. Once again. Uh, you can learn more about the special election with our article that will be in Saturday's paper and then also profiles of um, Wang and Wilkin, who are running for the Republican nomination for the state Senate. Uh, the state representative candidates that will represent both Jackson and Vinton counties, I can throw their names out and talk about that, but they're unopposed. Okay. So we'll, we'll confirm that they came through the election yes. later because we have more to tell you. <clears throat> okay, big meeting at the Vinton County School Board last Tuesday evening. Red may mention it when he comes on. Uh, he'll be joining us just a little later to talk about some news and some thoughts he has. Uh, but uh, at that meeting, the Vinton County School Board, by a four to one vote, approved uh, approved the uh, approved the teacher's contract. It's a three-year contract. And of course, those come around, but this one was a little more interesting because uh, it, it came down to, to close to when the deadline for the contract was. And it was known because the teacher's contract or the teacher's uh, union rep put out a statement that they felt like the school district had plenty of money for bigger raises for the teachers than what the school district wanted to give. Gotcha. And there was a pretty good gap there. I mean, we know that uh, unofficially, all right, the, some reliable sources. The way it turned out, uh, the teachers will be getting a 4.5% raise for year one and year two of the contract, which begins this year, and 3% the third year, all right? Okay. The vote was four to one, and the only member who voted against the contract was Scarlett Newton, and she felt the teachers should have gotten more. Okay. So uh, I can tell you that the teachers at one point were asking for a lot more than 4.5%, but anyway... It is. Um, it, it was approved, and it will be going to the. Uh, it will be going. Uh, the, the new school year starts in the middle of August, and they'll be all ready to roll, and that will no longer be an issue. So uh, we'll have that story, of course, in Saturday's paper as well. And uh, James had a picture up there. If you put that back up, James, uh, that is the. This is the. This also happened at the school board meeting on uh, Tuesday evening. And this is the new teachers that were hired oh, uh, cool. at the Wells, or at the Vinton County Local School District, and the board members are in the front row. I'm gonna I'm gonna name those from uh, left to right: Cindy Strasball, Jason Radabaugh, Marianne Hale, Laura Martin, and Scarlett Newton. So they're important. But the back row are the new faces, new faculty members for the Vinton County Local School District. They are from left to right: Steve Roach, Sonia Hill, Bethany Kinnison, Katie King. Brenda Bills, and Brittany Montana-Legg. 
I'm going to mention two in particular. Steve Roach there on the far left. He was a former teacher and a middle school principal at Benton County, and he left, and he has come back. Oh, okay. Serve at the district as a math teacher at the high school, very well known in Benton County. And then you go over to Katie King. She's fourth over from the left. She's very well known in Jackson County. She was a great music student and graduate from Wellston High School. Okay. She went on to the Ohio University program, was successful there. And last year, she did her, her training uh, at Jackson High School with the Jackson Marching Ironmen. Cool. So um, she had the experience of working with that big band, and now she's hired with Vinton with the Vinton County Local Schools as assistant band good. director, and she will be working under their new band director, who is Sam Kugel, who was an assistant band director at Jackson the last several years. So uh, all the, a lot of local connections there. All right. Uh, we, we also want to tell you, I don't know whether I told you this, but I'm going to tell you again if I didn't, just to be sure. Uh, they had three meetings, three committee meetings in Wellston, uh, the Health and Safety Committee, about what to do on the cat problem. Remember? <laughs> Yes, I well, remember. He, well, I've heard that a time well, or two well, about the cats. They've decided that there is no solution. Okay. All right. So that is the bottom so line. So we've thrown in the towel. The cats win. The, 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 the cats win. It's just the feasibility, the cost, and, and all like that. Um, somebody, let's see, what did they decide? Somebody figured out. Um, Joy Majors Hudson Euler did some calculations, and I'm not sure, she's from Wellston, but she figured it out. It would take five and a half years and about $476,000 if local veterinarians were used to conduct a comprehensive spay and neuter campaign for the estimated 2,000 stray cats. Now, I don't know who counted the stray cats, but that's what they figured would have to be spayed and neutered for this thing to work. Wow. And so... Um, Mayor Charlie Hudson, on top of that, pointed out that spaying and neutering would only solve a portion of the problem at hand, as there are cats that are owned by people that also go out and, you know, they copulate as well. They, yes, they, they do kitty things. Right, exactly. Yes. So, uh, no more cat uh, crisis in Wellston as far as a solution goes. But they cats tried. Win. They met three times. They listened <laughs> to the public. They gave it thought. And they probably did the smart thing. They said... <laughs> Nothing we can do. <laughs> We're just going to agree to, to throw it in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of C's, let's talk about COVID. <gasps> Pete, you haven't mentioned that in a really long time. Well, there's still, there, there, there's more cases than there have been. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's stratospheric or there's a sharp increase, but they're still there and they're not going down. Yeah. Uh, the latest figures in Jackson County, uh, this was from earlier in the week, 147 new cases reported. In, oh, the, wow. in the in the period from July 18th to the 24th, uh, as of July 26, 136 active cases in the county. However, no deaths, no active hospitalizations. Okay, that's good news. In Vinton County, as of July 25th, this comes from the Vinton County Health Department. 34 active cases, no active hospitalizations. This does represent an increase of three from the last report that the Vinton County Health Department had. But it's out there. It's still out there. Just be careful. Right. Remember, the know? senior citizen centers, uh, as of now, are all closed as far as the congregate mills mm -hmm. uh, f at the Jackson, uh, Wellston, and Oak Hill senior citizen centers. They don't want the seniors congregating for that meal. They are doing delivery and pickup meals, though. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, a lot of travel things. We see a lot of orange cones around all, all, all the time. Uh, there's money to fix things, and this is the season when it's done, when you know you can do your asphalting and your construction in hot weather. And one of the big projects in Jackson is the North High Street Bridge Replacement Project. And right now, uh, that work started last Monday, and uh, that bridge on North High Street, which is between the blocks of Wood Avenue and West Main Street, uh, it, it will... Uh, it will be closed for at least two months. And there it is. That's where the bridge was. Oh, my. Uh, it's gone. <laughs> you can see uh, one of the bridge abutments uh, in the background, but they moved it. That is where the bridge was across Salt Lake Creek there. <laughs> Saying that that bridge is closed is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> right now, you know, the, I mean... <laughs> the, the water was down and there were some kids trying some, doing some wading there. I'm not sure that was a really yeah, probably good not thing to good do. Either. But Them to, Duke boys could jump right over that. Right, exactly. You know, in the General Lee. But that is uh, that is between the block of... Okay. <laughs> wow. 
That is the block between Wood Avenue and West Main Street. And so, you know, if you're local, you know how to loop around. Yes. But the official, uh, the official detour, if you're not sure, is via Main Street, Bridge Street, Chillicothe Street, and Wood Avenue. But that is not a state route, but it's a kind of like a place where you cross from one end of town to the other if you live on that end of town. But once again, they're saying the Ohio Department of Transportation is saying sometime in the fall. So they're being real careful on a, a uh, completion date there. All right, uh, good news to report. This is out of Chillicothe, but you know, uh, local people are affected. Kenworth is doing a big expansion over there in Ross County. Oh, great. And that is a, uh, they do truck parts there. Yeah. And uh, you know, they have a lot of swings. You know, people get hired and then people get laid off depending on the orders and the yep. economy and like that. But there will be a uh, $1.4 million expansion in the works. This has been approved with some government money uh, helping it out. 119 new jobs. Uh, there is a tax credit that has been approved by the High Department of Development, as well as a $250,000 Jobs Ohio grant. And as we all know, Jennifer, from talking to folks uh, who work there, a lot of folks from Jackson and Vinton County work there, not just Ross County. And these are high paying factory jobs as well as I'm sure some uh, uh, non-manufacturing, non-labor jobs, sure. spinoff type jobs that are in the office and so forth that are created because of this. So uh, once again, in Ross County, but good news for Jackson and Benton counties too, and also stability for the folks who already work there, I'm sure, mm -hmm. as they're going to be adding, uh, they're going to be adding uh, new jobs. That's great. It is very good. All right, in Wellston, there is a lot of construction going on as well. They have a major water line projects going on in both uh, New York Avenue and West Broadway Street. And uh, Service Director Anthony Brenner wanted to prove a point at the last Wellston City Council meeting about the need to replace these water lines because there's some inconvenience involved. Sure. Uh, you know, the, the roads are torn up. They yeah. may be closed a little bit. There's dirt laying all over the place. Uh, there, uh, there may be, I'm not, Water interruptions, I'm not sure there may be know. disruptions in service or whatever, sure. but he showed a photo of one of the old lines that they took out on New York Avenue. And, uh, there it is. Um, take a look at that oh right my. now. Uh, look how, uh, grimy that looks there. Water, Hecky. water that you drink yeah. or that you drink on New York Avenue flows through there. They are old water lines and they need replaced. Uh, they have, they've had trouble, uh, they've had trouble everywhere, uh, you know, water lines get old and they leak, but there's been particular problems in Wellston over the years, in recent years, a lot of water line leaks have occurred. And this is the reason why they need replaced, uh, the, uh, the condition, I'd say so. the, de <laughs> the, the deteriorated condition of, of water lines. All right. Uh, in the village of Colton, there is a new councilman. Uh, he was actually sworn in, uh, last Tuesday evening at their last meeting. His name is Matt McCarthy, and there is Matt on the left being sworn in by Colton Mayor Kim Milliken. And Matt is uh, certainly not a new face in Colton. He's lived there for a number of years. He's served on council before. He agreed to come back and serve again to take the place of Councilwoman Catherine Griffith, who had to resign because she moved from the village. Gotcha. So congratulations to Matt McCarthy. He is the new uh, he is the new councilman in the a village of Colton. All right. Uh, we're going to say more about this later. I know we heard about it yesterday from mm -hmm. John Smith and Dave Channel, but Pig Iron Day is going to be not this Saturday, but next Saturday, August 6th yes. uh, at Jackson's more. Manpower Park. And we'll be reporting more on that uh, next week. Uh, also, Jackson, the Jackson High School Athletic Department wants to report uh, it's getting close to football season. Can you believe it? And sports passes and football reserve seats will go on sale starting on Monday, August the first at eight a.m. This is very important if you uh, don't if you want the pass or you want to uh, have a reserve seat or renew your reserve seat. Mm -hmm. You need to do that starting August first. You can do it online this year. I think that's a little different. Now uh, you used to have to go in the office. I don't know for sure oh, if you're allowed okay. to go in the office now. I presume you are but they are advertising it that you can do it online. Uh, the link for online ticketing is under our district on the Jackson City Schools website. But once again, uh, high school and middle school sports season passes and football reserve seats will go on sale starting on August the 1st. 
And there is uh, a new athletics and activity secretary working under Pat Stevens. Remember, Marsha Taylor did it for so many years. Well, she has finally retired. Congratulations to her. And the new person in this position, very important, especially this time of year, is Kim Dameron, by the way. Okay. So yep. congratulations to her for her position. If you want to get the same reserve seat that you had, you have dibs on it. But if you don't buy it by August 17th, they may sell it out from under you. Gotcha. So whether you're get getting, in there whether, get you're, whether you're, you want a reserve seat for the first time or you've already had one, uh, you, you still have to make the contact and renew sure. no later than August 17th. And of course, the earlier that you go, if you want a new seat, the better seat you'll have a chance of getting. All right. Uh, the Jackson County uh, Common Police Court has announced that a jury trial that was supposed to start Monday, August the 1st, has been canceled. So they wanted us to announce and put in the paper and put on the radio to the prospective jurors yes. that you don't have to show up. You know, you get this, uh, it's not a subpoena, but you get a you get an instruction to show up. Yes. You know, you're supposed to do that unless you get an excuse or a pass and they go along with it. So by the time they find out that a jury trial is canceled, there's not time for them to call everybody or right. make a major mailing. So they count on an announcement on social media and through the media. And so that's why we're telling you about that right now. Speaking of deadlines, this is the last day to pay your, your second half property tax in Jackson County. Okay. Right. So if you haven't done it, you need to do it today. You're going to get and, your name and, in the and, paper. And, but, well, that can happen on down the line, <laughs> but you will for sure get a penalty if you don't pay. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you uh, if you mishandled your, if you came on vacation or you mishandled your property tax statement, or even if you didn't get it, you got to know to do it. Yep. Uh, you can go to the Jackson County Treasurer's Office today to do it. You can go to West Banco. You can go online. You can drop it in the drop box today that's outside uh, uh, outside the courthouse. Okay. And uh, Lee Hubbard, the treasurer, uh, advises you to do one of those things other than come in the office live because they only have three people in there yeah, and a it, lot of people wait can, till the last minute. Lines, I've waited in a line before there. So uh, the West Banco thing's very convenient too. You can just go in and pay that way, you know, if you're already at the bank. And so there's lots of ways to pay your taxes. Just pay them. <laughs> Ab absolutely. Yeah. No, you, need, you do need to do that. Uh, also, TLC Ministries, uh, which, uh, of course, uh, operates out of an office between Colton and Wellston, uh -huh. they have announced a, a, a new schedule for summer meal pickup locations. We will have this in the Saturday paper. We'll put it online. But we do want to tell you uh, that those pickup points, um, and they began actually on Wednesday, July 27th. They're at the Trinity Wesleyan Church and the Margaret Ann Pool in Oak Hill. And then they're also uh, in Colton. Uh, also, Fairview Terrace in Wellston, Wells Manor in Wellston, Bundy Heights in Wellston, the Blamer Field in Wellston, and the Jackson Benton Community Action Office in Wellston. Um, there are no congregate meals. Um, these are grab-and-go sites for summer meals. TLC Ministries will deliver food to the following sites at the times that are listed. Uh, some of those sites opened, opened on the 27th, which is Wednesday. Some of them don't open until Monday. So check out the list that we'll have in the paper. Okay. All right. That's TLC Ministries. Okay. Real cool thing happened at the Marquet last Saturday. Yeah. It was a so kind neat. of kind of like a partnership between the Marquet and the Southern Hills Arts Council and the Appalachian Old Car Club. Yes. But all the Appalachian Old Car our Old Car people came and parked their classic vehicles Isn't along that Main cool? Street. If you didn't know, you'd think this picture was taken back in 1950 I know. Or something. That's so true. You know, I think James took that picture, and it's a, a wonderful picture. We're going to have it in the paper. And uh, they also showed an old movie that night, and a lot of the old Appalachian Old Car Club members had a chance to see that free movie. It was uh, Singing in the Rain. Have yeah. you seen that one? Well, I'm not... singing in the rain, <gasps> singing in the rain. Did Debbie Reynolds do that? Or Gene Kelly? Yes. Okay, James knows. Very good. I've not seen, I've not seen the movie, but I talked to several people who did and say, "Hey, I hadn't seen that movie. That was great." Yeah, that's awesome. But, but the side of those old cars, I just wonder what people thought when they were driving. I know, through. right? Did they drive through a time warp? What is happening? What kind of yeah? Right. Hold it, I drive through to get. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. Exactly. Okay, some other nice things to tell you about. 
Uh, the MacArthur Project, uh, the, the, the village is involved in it, but it's also kind of an ad hoc committee of community people to uh, raise money for new Christmas lights in downtown MacArthur. Okay. They've had a lot of success. We talked about that before, but they got a heck of a boost uh, just here in the last week. The Vinton County National Bank, which is such a good corporate citizen wherever they are, but of course, especially right there in Vinton County in their home territory, they donated $6,500 to that campaign. Uh, it is a $30,000 project, and that is a lot for a little town to try uh, to raise. You that's know. a lot of a lot, yeah. And so $6,500, uh, that donation will not only fund decorations, but also the electric hookup and supplies through 10 poles. That's so great. that is the bank people right there with their oversized check, and it should be oversized, $6,500. <laughs> uh, right there, uh, if the, some of those folks in the picture, I'm going to name their names because uh, between them being donors and committee members, uh, they're doing yeoman's work in making this happen in MacArthur. There's Vinton County National Bank President Mark Ursland, MacArthur Village Clerk Janie Fannin. Committee members are Juanita McNichol. She's also on council. Bill Garrett, who has been a longtime resident of MacArthur, funeral, uh, a former funeral home operator yes. there for years. Deanna Tribe, who's very active in the historical society. Gail Young and the Vinton County National Bank MacArthur branch manager, Heather Booth, who says that Christmas is very special to her, so I know that she wanted to make that happen. Love that. Another good thing that's happening, this is such a great project. It's called Clips for Kids, and they will provide free back-to-school haircuts on Saturday or on Sunday, August the 7th. Yes. That's a week from this Sunday. It will take place at the Christ United Methodist Church in Jackson from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's at 150 Portsmouth Street in Jackson. I'm guessing that's in the Family Life Center. I would say so. But, that would be a great place to do it. At the church, students should arrive with freshly washed and dried hair, and they will be sent home. Not only will they get the haircut, but they'll get a bag of personal care items, shampoo, conditioner, brushes and comb, toothbrushes, floss, toothpaste, and other grooming supplies, and treats. Oh, How about that? Love and, it. And all this is free. Sponsors that are making that happen, let's give them some credit. Elizabeth Flowers and Gifts. Wendy's of Jackson, Southern Ohio Smiles, and General and General Dental Care, uh, Josh McIntosh, the Christ United Methodist Church stylists who are donating uh, their time to this event are Becky Mayu, Hayden Brown of Village Haircutters in Jackson, uh, Gavin Jonas of Razor's Edge, Courtney Teeters of Brook Lantair Studios, and Paula Eisen of Hair Happening, and Jen Sykes, who is from Athens. So nice. between the donations and the facilities and the stylists and the people who donated for the supplies and all, what a great community thing. Hey, yes. Jen, some of these guys are going to be on the show next Thursday. I was thinking it'd be a great segment. Maybe we could have them give you a haircut live on the air. Okay. Give, well, have give me a haircut. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? That'd be that be that be such a good segment. It would be, except for they're going to have to call and ask Evan permission before <laughs> anyone puts their hands in my hair. Who is Evan? Evan is my hair guru that does curly hair that will would die if someone else touched my hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, well, uh, maybe we can get Red Thompson Jr. together. There you go. Yeah, that's not a bad Or idea. maybe James Hamilton, since it was his idea. Okay, well, that's right. Okay, well, anyway. I was uh, just waiting for that to be your <laughs> idea, so it didn't just sound like I was cheap and trying to get a free haircut. Okay. We'll do James but, then. <laughs> but, but, any, but anyway, you know, in this time where, you know, the inflation and the economy no, that and, is and a all huge like that, deal. and, you know, many families, honestly, you know, uh, not necessarily impoverished, but, you know, struggling to make ends meet, here is a great opportunity to get some free services and supplies that are kind of in line with back to school. You got and it. most of our local school districts, I think the first day of school is in the middle of August. So it is coming coming up here very soon. So the article about clips for kids, I know we went over it real quick. Uh, that will also be in Saturday's paper. So you can learn about all these things we're talking about yeah. uh, in the Telegram and on our website. All right. So uh, once again, Vinton County Junior Fair Livestock Sale tonight. Myself and Jeremiah Shave will be there. All the coverage in Wednesday's paper. This and a whole lot more in Saturday's paper as well. Uh, we have Red Thompson Jr. with us tonight. I know, or this, or this morning, I know he wants to talk a little bit about tourism and some other things. So I'm going to give up my seat to him. Very good. And we thank him for all the work he has done this week. 
Uh, Red is a great initiator. Uh, I don't have to really tell him to do a whole lot at all. He just goes out and knows what to do. I very much appreciate what he does for us. That's right. Yes. Well, come on over, Red, and while you're doing that. Thanks, Pete, and have fun at the livestock sale. Don't buy a hog or buy a hog. Um, let's go over your weekend weather forecast, and it's looking pretty darn good. Uh, finally, a, a good rain-free weekend. Look at that. Uh, today on Friday, looking like about a 20% chance of rain, but very mild temperatures, highs only of 82, lows of 60. But tomorrow and Sunday, check that out. Highs on Saturday with some sunshine of 82 degrees. And on Sunday, highs of 80 degrees and looking absolutely gorgeous. Um, as we begin your work week on Monday, it looks a little bit uh, like that rain's coming back in, but not a problem because highs only of 83 degrees. So looks fairly mellow uh, through about Tuesday or Wednesday. Then we get back up into the 90s. But, you know, whatever. We'll take it. It's summer, right? Yeah, we're getting close to October, my favorite month. So I just every day we get a little closer to those that 60 days where the weather's really nice in October and November. We so. hope so. <laughs> well, um, I What's have, going on, Red? Well, I have several things today. Um, I want to uh, kind of top on what you we've discussed before. We discussed including Jackson County in this regional tourism plan. It looks like that's may going to happen here. Um, the uh, the five hundred million dollars that the governor set aside for the Appalachian counties is going to hopefully include a regional tourism plan for Vinton, Athens, Jackson, and and um, Hocking counties. Okay. To extend the Hocking Hills tourism south toward us. Good. And it would be at Lake Jackson State Park. That's where it went in, in Oak Hill, and go all the way to Logan. Great. And, you know, that could be good for your businesses. And Sure. But I think this, uh, what I want to discuss was the Jackson County angle at first. Um, this could be real good for the city of Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we discussed, uh, Benton County doesn't have some things that, might take a while to get. Jackson already has them. The Dakotas, the event center, the Marquee, the movie theater. They have those things that tourists like to do. So they're already established. And Jackson has Dakotas and some of the steakhouses, uh, Rowdy's Roadhouse, things. They have music at Rowdy's Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. So... I think what John Kerry and some of the others want to do is put together a package where everybody can benefit from the Hocking Hills tourism. Sure. That would make sense. And it, it's all going to start with the Hotel MacArthur renovation. That seems it's going to be a key to moving it south, as we discussed before. Um, and I think Jackson County, um, you know, Jackson County could – could benefit from, from something like this. Um, Jackson County has about 35, mm -hmm. 36,000 vehicles a day mm -hmm. on it. So I think that they could, um, if someone puts on their thinking cap, comes up with a good tourism idea, then you know, it might be the time to speak up. Um, Wellston could maybe could do something with the depot. This could be a shot in the arm for Wellston. If they could come up with something with a depot, um, and maybe do something historic. It's Wilson's most historic building now. The movie is going to be gone soon. Yeah. Hey, Red, speaking of the depot, I'll just throw this in here real quick. A uh, little bit of a plug. So every, from, I think it started on July 14th, the Southern Hills Arts Council has been doing free art classes for kids every Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> oh, really? And those classes are in Oak Hill, Jackson, and Wilson. And in Wilson, they've been held at the depot. That's cool. So there's a few days left for that. Every Tuesday and Thursday, and I believe next Thursday is the final class. I'll tell you, the depot is um, it's definitely Wellston's best anchor to tourism. They have that park there beside it. I'm sure Mayor Hudson over there is a he's a thinker. He's always looking to get something going, and I'm sure he'll be involved in these discussions. But 
this is probably a one shot opportunity for the Appalachian County. It's five hundred million dollars. It's yep. just a <laughs> ton of money. That's right. Um and, you know, Jennifer, I know you're interested in regional tourism and and um, you've discussed maybe what, what it could do for Jackson. You like sure. microbreweries. That could be a big thing mm -hmm. if we get people coming here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's just tying the whole area together instead of making it segmented, I think, is, you know, what the goal is. And, and you know, it's funny. If you live in, in a big city, you think nothing to drive 40 minutes across town to go to dinner or something. But here it's like, oh, I can't, I have to drive 40 minutes somewhere. It's forever. And I'm like, it's, it's the same, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, we need to connect all of our little towns together and as one big area. And if you think of it that way, it certainly could be a huge draw from the from the Hawking area down to us. Yeah, you just don't realize. They need to all connect. And, and you know, when I was on before, you said it's just, we just take the Hawking Hills for granted, and we don't even realize how many people go there. Oh, man. Millions. It's crazy. I mean, we have a Smoky Mail, a little, they call them the Little Smokies. Mm -hmm. We got a Little Smokies. 50 miles from us, mm -hmm. and it's time for Southern Ohio to tap into that yep. money. Tourism could be a big money for us, but like we discussed, the drawback is, and this is what the local citizens, I think, have to think about before they get into it, it's not the best hours. We've discussed that before. Mm -hmm. It's just nights and weekends. People from Columbus is not going to come down here on Wednesday afternoon. They're going to come Saturday and Friday night. <laughs> so, Maybe. And you got to have stuff. Of course, with the camping, that could be, yeah. you know. And that's another issue that, that we're getting into is camping's becoming a big, big thing. Wilson's getting into camping. Benton County's got camping all over the county. Mm -hmm. and Jackson's got out on Route 32 at the old Noah's Oak. Mm -hmm. There's camping out there. So camping... Camping's getting to be a big industry. I never thought of camping as an industry. Oh, well, you can thank COVID for that, too. <laughs> no, I think so. And the power line people, they just camped it. If anyone had a lot, they set up a camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, there, there's a lot going on with, uh, with that. And I think that, that what we have to do is... You know, we have John Kerry at at the helm. He's a great he's a great thinker. He's a great organizer. I'm sure he'll come up with a help our local officials develop a good plan mm -hmm. that will you know make this happen. Um, so um, last night, uh, you know, we'll see where that goes. That's a developing story. Okay. Um, and last night I got to see a country legend. Jennifer, I went home to to West Virginia, my home county, Jackson County, West Virginia, and saw the great Kathy Matea in concert. Really? Yes. Cool. I tell you, she is a pro. Yeah. Uh, she she had the audience in her hand from the second she walked out on the stage, and she sung several songs about West Virginia. She did Country Roads. Of course, her big hit, the signature one, 18 Wilson and a Dozen Roses. Yeah. She does an extended version of that. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it was it was really a, a good good time at the uh, at the Jackson County, West Virginia Fair last night. They, That's they, awesome. You know, um, I don't get out much, so it's nice to get out. For well, it's because you work all the time, <laughs> Red. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to, nice to get over there and. I hadn't been to the local fair there for a long time, but you know, if you've never seen her, she's, you know, she doesn't get out as much as she used to, but she still gets out there some, and she just puts on a great show. So if you get a chance to see her, it's definitely worth the money. And for ten dollars last night, you couldn't have seen a better show. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we also have several other things coming up there. The Goodwill and MacArthur is getting ready to open. And wow, it's in a beautiful building. Yes. It's all signed, and I think they're stocking it right now. So, so we'll be, look, be looking forward to that. Uh, if you're driving around Jackson, the streets are 
They're doing pavement. Oh, they look so good. <laughs> they do. They better put some speed bumps up. It's gonna they're gonna be racetracks because they're so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been bumpy streets for a while, so it's nice to have smooth yeah. ones. But getting out of town can be a little tricky. I was going to Benton County yesterday and had to I was cut off two or three times by roadblocks. Yeah. <laughs> so it's getting around town, navigating. It's a little little rough right now. I'm just glad we can drive down Main Street again because that was a nightmare for, for a week last week. Oh, my goodness. When they closed down the, for the, to replace the railroad tracks. <laughs> yeah, now they're going to pave it. How about that? Oh. How about that? So, um, you, know, you know, those... And the school's coming up. Can you believe that? I know. It's crazy. Football season, right around the corner. Yes. Yeah, 17th. Two games in August. Two varsity football games in the month of August. Can't believe it. And, well, Ohio kids are lucky, Jennifer. Uh, most of the country starts Monday. Yeah, I know West Virginia starts really early. Yeah, my friend teaches in Missouri. They start Monday. Man. And my friend lives in Mississippi. Gene, he's watching this morning. Uh, they start Monday. So wow. Ohio kids are lucky. <laughs> That's a lot. Now, now you might not believe this, and you, well, maybe you will because you're about my age, a little younger, but we there was a time we started school on September 14th. Wow. Think how much that's moved up over the years. Yeah, a month. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. After well, you know, you know, I love I love to tell the kids. A lot of kids don't know why summer break was even started. Do you do you know why summer break was started? I assume it was so that kids could help out like in the farms and stuff, oh. right? <laughs> Is it true? Yeah. That, yeah, that's yeah, to help help out with the farm during the summer. Yeah. Now, mom always told me that there was a time when the boys, um, they had different start times for the boys and girls. The girls started schools first, and the boys started later so they could help put up hay. I, I see. Okay. So there was, now, I don't know how far that went back, but that was, you know, back a ways. Um, but, you know, I've been up at the, um, the Benton County Fair this week. I know Pete's missing that. <laughs> And, you know, they still have, like Pete said, the Grand Derby. I'll be up there for that tomorrow night. Woohoo! Man. Are you going to drive? Oh, no. <laughs> that, one, that might be one place where I could, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the safest place in the world for you, for Ray Thompson to be <laughs> operating a vehicle. <laughs> you know, oh, is, boy. You know, there's, um, I might get the Dukes of Hazard car and go out. <laughs> Like it? Oh, I've never done that, but boy, I tell you, people loves it. Oh, they do. It's so fun to watch too. <laughs> I know a bridge you could try to jump, Red, if you wanted to try and do it too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere between Wood Avenue and and uh, High was it High Street High Jackson? Street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you know these are times um, um, that, that of opportunity and times of. Uh, like Pete said, with the inflation and everything, it, it's time of a kind of a scared time where everybody's kind of concerned about the economy. And and also this $500 million could give us a new lease on life. Sure. So I think any public official out there, and, and you know, this could be nice for Oak Hill. Um, Oak Hill has that treasure, the Welsh American Heritage Museum. Mm-hmm. It is like going back in time 200 years. Have you been in there? No, I have not. Oh, you should. I know. It's it's amazing. Anyone that likes history, um, um, it's just it's just like opening a door and you're just going back in a time machine. Everything's authentic. It's all laid out nice. Yeah. It, they've, they've kept it up really well. And you just see stuff in there you just won't see anywhere else. Sure. And, you know, that that's another thing about this tourism initiative, antique dealers. You know, local antique dealers do pretty well in tourism areas. Yeah. So, you know, that might be, you have any antiques? Yeah, a few. Mm, you know, you yep. might be able to sell them. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know in Indiana, I tell you, they, 
I don't know how old they are, but they're out there every weekend. I don't know if they're really antiques or not. But, uh. <laughs> Sometimes they're meant to look that way, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, you dress them up, you disguise them good, and you sell them, <laughs> sell them to tours. <laughs> no, but no, but we have some good opportunities, and and I think um, Celeski. Oh, one thing that I connected with this that I almost forgot to mention. Celeski's going to do something really cool, the Convention and Visitors Bureau in Benton County on the Moonville Rail Trail. Got to put in a railroad museum. Oh, okay. On the trail. That's really cool. And people love trains. I mean, they just, there's one in Hitton, West Virginia, and people from all over the country. I want to ride on a train. I've never been on a train before. I mean, other than the little one at Noah's Ark when I was a little girl, but... <laughs> That wasn't really, that doesn't count. <laughs> How about you, James? You like trains? I love trains. I got trains trains all over the place. My uh, All trains all the time. All trains all the time. I, I took a train to work today. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, in Texas, they're, they're talking about building a train that goes 260 miles an hour. Yeah. Elon <laughs> Musk is doing all kind of weird, crazy stuff. Yeah, those, those crazy like speed rail things that they have in Asia... Like 600 like, miles an hour oh, and yeah. stuff. Like, like I read somewhere that you could have one of those that went from like Cleveland to New York in like 45 minutes yeah. or something like I that. I mean, when you get off of it, your face kind of looks like that. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but no, it is the way, probably the way of the future going underground or, or, um, whatever. But no, I think the train thing would be really, really cool. And, um, it would be neat, um, uh, Obviously, the ra the trail is on the old railroad, right? Yes. So that makes that's very fitting. The Moonville Tunnel was built as a railroad tunnel, and it just it, it's just amazing how many people knows where it is. Yeah. Matt Lauer used to talk about it on the Today Show. Yeah. <laughs> we got the picture of the Moonville Tunnel, and and um, it's just a great iconic place for for us uh, and. Uh, but like the inner tribe always said, make money off this stuff. That's the key. Sure. <laughs> Not you don't want bird watchers, you want spenders. I always remember. <laughs> <laughs> and she you know, it's nice to have people around, but you know, leave the money behind and treat them good, entertain them, and they'll come back and come yeah. back for more. That's just what you want. That's awesome. So we got some good stuff going and um and then we'll, we'll keep up with the tourism activities. Hopefully, Jackson County can benefit from it. And we're going to have uh, coverage in the paper. I'm going to do uh, interviews with several of the principals involved, the Oak Hill Chamber of Commerce, hopefully the Jackson City Mayor, uh, Mayor Hudson, uh, and the Benton County CVB, and see what we can construct our course and profiles of what tourism could bring to the area. So. There's a lot going on. Enjoy the rest of your summer, and uh, thanks again for having me on, Miss Jennifer. Well, of course. It's always a pleasure having you here, Red, and uh, we always have a lot of fun when you stop by, and we want to thank you for all your hard work and dedication to um, letting people know what the heck's going on up Venton County Way. And All right, so we have a minute and a half left, Red. Have you or have you not eaten anything this week at the Venton County Fair? Uh, not yeah, I did. Um, I knew it. I knew. <laughs> he was going to lie. Yeah. He's like, oh, well, I guess I'll tell the truth. He yeah. always scopes out something. I actually, I haven't eaten any junk food yet. I, that's why I had, I did I haven't bought any. I'm going to tomorrow. I'm going to get a Texas tea tomorrow. But um, today, yesterday I got a grilled cheese sandwich and, and some chips from the 4-H booth. Okay. Supporting local. Good for you, Red. Yeah, so there. What the heck is the Texas tea? Is that a Texas tenderloin? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Texas tea. I like to get lots of mustard on mine. Okay. <laughs> mustard and onions. <laughs> Sounds good. Those things are huge, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Those, I love them. That's one of my favorite things. And get some french fries with it. It's good stuff. So. That's what I'd recommend if you want to try something tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Well, head up. Make sure that you do head up to the Venton County Fair, and uh, you have a couple more days to enjoy it. And um, don't forget livestock sale tonight. And if you want to get out and support the kids, that would be much appreciated as well. So. 
All right, James, is there anything else we need to do today? Uh, well, Pete already mentioned that the athletic passes were on sale. We were yes. asked to mention that. Uh, I don't know. I think we covered it. I think Red nailed it. I think he did, too. Yeah. All right. Well, it's 10 o'clock, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy some beautiful weather. It's going to be great. And uh, we'll see you right back here on Monday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.